Hello friends, it's a new year, coming in, checking in, saying hi, couple of things been going on, the holidays was mostly depression, maybe you went through the same, Thanksgiving I didn't even go to my family thing, and Christmas I didn't go to my family thing. I did get Christmas presents for my, some of my siblings. And so I did that beforehand. And this year I'm probably going to get Christmas presents throughout the year. So that way it's check checklist, this person, this person, this person. One thing about Christmas and Thanksgiving and holidays and basically from when there's candy on the shelves at the store, you know it's on, is the the build-up to the stress and then the peak point where everyone gets together is the climax of the stress. So sometimes there's not-so-great things happening there with the family. Sometimes there's someone that's a little sour, pissy, and if I'm not in a good mood, I'm not going to go be around the family. I'm not going to be around anyone. So then I, you know, my mother is calling me. She's the only one that's basically putting the pressure on. In past years, she didn't do that this year. Some years she does it. This year she really piled it on hard. And I basically had to tell her that hey look it might I might come across as selfish or whatever it's just I gotta do what I gotta do and maybe you can relate to this that if you're in a low dark area and nothing's really coming through you're not really much of a person inside and it's not gonna be a good time for myself I'm would have to fake laughs. I hate doing that. I'd have to fake smiles. I'd have to fake giving a shit about what someone's talking about. And that can be irritable in itself. I'm not into that. So I had to say to my mom, yeah, I'm not going to go. Why not? <laughs> don't, you, don't you know me well enough by now, mother? And that could be irritating as well. So I had to say, because my brain's fucked up. <laughs> you remember? You remember that much? So we got over that one. And then, of course, after I said, no, I'm not going to go, then it turned into, okay, I love you. Okay, bye. Whatever. That's the pressure. Ultimately, they'll go either way with it. It's just the pressure. It's the push, 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 push. Come, 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 come. And then, sadly enough, it was also for Christmas as well. And it basically gets down to where some people are texting me, you know, you're gonna make it, you're gonna come. I'm 50 50. 50 50. Okay. There's also a little bit of sleep situations. So if I'm also tired for that occasion as well as depression and whatever else, then. It's a no-go. And thus, there's the grief of... The the grief that they're going to have and the grief that I'm going to have. And it's the shared grief. And that's the thing about the moods, is the, the grief being a weight on your back. You know, if you haven't... If you haven't contacted friends for a while, or you haven't done this, or you haven't done that, then you have that tugging at you. And that's a reminder of what you are or what you're not. Okay. Leon. <laughs> All right, so a couple of things that, that we've got going on here. We've got a whole brand new year here in Denver. It's snowing. It's and last week there was a, a very horrible thing that happened nearby. 
probably saw it on the news. And that's about eight miles from here. <laughs> so my family was leaving messages on the message machine and I got up and I didn't even know what it was. And so my heart goes out to those individuals. I don't even want to say what it is. You, you probably know what it is. Here in Colorado, <clears throat> it's, what is today, the 5th, the 4th? And the birdies say hi. Napoleon, Napoleon says hi. And Leon and Sasha. Sasha's hormones have come down a little bit, so she hasn't been bugging Leon for breeding. I think about parakeets. If I haven't mentioned this, they're monogamous for life. So Leon already paired with the female that passed away, so he won't breed with Sasha, who's never paired. So she's she wants it, he doesn't. Yeah, and Napoleon, he's going to be six next month. You're going to be six years old, huh? Since you hatched. February 5th? Shit, I got I to gotta look at his hatch papers. And... Pretty much today, I'm sober. Tomorrow, I'll be sober. Friday, probably not. I've lowered my alcohol consumption, so that's one thing. I encourage others, of course. You know, I know people that have depression. They're going to want to drink, or they drink, or they've got to push it aside a lot. So again, I stay away from the vodka. I don't glorify alcohol. I don't go drinking with buddies. I don't go to the bar. I am single, so I, re I really don't have pressure from a companion or a spouse or children or any of that and I can understand that that could be a thing definitely for people that are, are hurting for a drink so that way they can clear their heads physically and so it's important to realize that alcohol is something that you can abuse and it's a tool something you can use to clear out your mind and it's also something that's adding to the depression as well so, as usual, my I like to keep it, personally, I like to keep it at about two tall boys per session of drinking. And ideally, it's probably better if I only do that three nights a week, four, maybe four days a week. And I have actual days that I stay away from it. And I realize... That the reason, mainly, not only is to feel good, it's because I do not want to have anxiety. So I know that if I stay away from alcohol for three or four months, my anxiety will be so high. And then as soon as I have that sip of whatever it is, I, that's the, the GABA in your brain, the relaxation that the alcohol has on you. And this is something that can roll over for a couple of days. You know, consider yourself numbed up in a way when you have a little bit of alcohol, especially if you have a, for myself, beer. Beer really does it. And vodka and all that, I've got to drink a lot of vodka to clear out my head. And, you know, I don't want to do that. I've had times where I was drinking Everclear. When I was doing keto, so here I was extremely dehydrated from having my carbohydrates real low and and then drinking a little bit of Everclear. So it went, I mean, we're talking next day, ultra dehydrated. So, so it's, you know, that's, that's why it's because I don't want the anxiety. If I didn't have the anxiety, I can put the alcohol away. I have been away from alcohol for years. I have. And 
Also, too, I think the effects of any of the things with my brain, as I age, it's more pronounced. So depression, anxiety. And I, you know, I think the also to the the things of life that you accumulate adds to the anxiety. So you have all these things in your mind of the oh this could happen, this could happen. And when you're a younger person, you don't know any of those things yet. There's some innocence there. Even a teen, a young in your twenties, you just don't know yet all these things. They you know, the news does real well at that to fill your head with a bunch of oh no what ifs, uh oh, this will happen, whatever. And I think that adds to the anxiety as well. So taking out a lot of that garbage, especially at a young age, then you won't fill your head with a bunch of dog crap. So, there's a tip. Eating well also is going to help for your depression and anxiety. And some things are going to add to it. So number one is the eating the food for my, for myself. Right here in a little bit, I'm going to have some turkey breasts that cost a little more. So I don't have all the nasty stuff that they put in it. And I have it in a slow cooker. So I'm cooking out nasty stuff in it that will come out into the, into the water. And then I'll take those out and I'll have that with some rice. And I might have a little bit of olive oil with some bread or whatever. And that's pretty simple if you think about it. It's much different than throwing some something in the microwave that you've got. A lean cuisine disgusting shit or whatever. You know, all those things go against you. They'll, they'll, all those things are going to mess up your, your blood sugar. It's all going to mess up your blood flow and a lot of saturated fats and a lot of hamburgers and all that stuff that you get easily for a good price are gonna wear you down. So that's always something. Always doing exercise about 20 minutes at least four times a week is good. For myself, hard exercise is never good. It's only gonna add to my depression. Because that's another way depression can come on is through physical trauma. So hurting myself in any way is going to add to depression. And that's another thing too about the drinking is you are hurting yourself by your liver and everything else. So that's going to add to the depression as well. That's another reason for keeping the drinking on the lower end. Not a moral thing. Not a, it's bad. Any of that kind of stuff. You know, actual real things I can point out here or why I do have a little bit of it and why it's better to only have a little bit of it or some of it. Even though two tall boys is probably not a little bit. It's still, it's, that's where I, that's where I dig. I'm also 210 pounds. So, you know, it's, if you're a lighter person, then you might, if you're a 140 pound person, woman or man, man 150 pounds, woman 130 pounds, 120 pounds, 110 pounds, then you might be good just getting a couple little cans. And that would, the equivalent of that would be roughly equal in, in a pound for pound situation there on alcohol effect. Also, too, as I say, it's alcohol is not good for relationships. Not really. So heavy, heavy alcohol is obviously not good for relationships. Anyways, moving on. Some of the, some, I wrote down a couple things here. One thing that's on my mind is going with the mood. So I'm a moody person. I've always been a moody person. I always will be a moody person until I'm dead. So something that's been on my mind is that part of that, that self-hatred or, or that, that thing that nags at the grief that nags at me is a part of, well, I do this, I do this, I do this. Well, I'm saying go with the mood to myself. Go with the mood. If I'm in a bad mood, then I go with it by myself. You know, I'll take it somewhere where I can use it 
and I'll think about some things where maybe I've been a, a pussy in one area and then I can say, well, I'm extremely freaking pissy right now. So I, I'm i going to think about this and this and this. And then I can, you know, I can really start shuffling things around inside of my mind where I can say to myself, yeah, that makes sense. That really makes sense. Without it being a to hell with this person, to hell with that person. That's not the kind of stuff that I want ever. So, you know, I, I always say to myself that there's love and and I want to keep that in my heart. I, I realize, though, in certain moods that there's not really a whole lot of love there. And it's another reason why it's really important to stay away from people when I'm in that mood. Because I am apathetic. And, you know, I, I have to... I have to really open up my head while I'm talking. And I'm already talking about something, and then I have to basically just stop talking about that when I'm around other people. And they can say, well, what the heck is this guy going on about? Now, it's going with the mood. Also, if I'm in a good mood, I'm not going to do some superstitious thing where I'm saying, oh, well, if I... If I'm in a good mood, then I could do... No, I'm just going to go with it. If I'm in a good mood, I'm going to go and I'm going to do something. And I'm probably not going to put too much into it. I'm just going to go and enjoy some things. You know, obviously, it's not going to be where I could say three weeks out, oh, we're going to get together and have a party because I'm feeling good today. No, that's not the way it goes with me. It's kind of... How do I feel right now? I can go do this and this and this if I want to. And sadly, it doesn't really involve other people very much because I, I really don't know where my mood's going to be when those moods come around or you know, what kind of activities are going to be going on that day or whatever. And I, can't, I do, I really, it really hurts that it is that way. It is that way, though, so... You know, you, you, you do what you can. And so, if you know that there's these, the snowballing or the rolling effect where, you know, other people are going to also appreciate horrible things that you've said or done or yelling, getting mad, yelling at someone or maybe... Maybe not even really realizing that you're raising your voice about something or being critical or whatever. Why are you doing that? Stop! Stop doing that. You know, things, things like that. Sadly, sometimes I yell at my birds, and that makes me sad. And I, I have to take a lot inside of me to stop and to walk away and the thing that's irritated me is that they don't they're not stopping if they're you know if the conure is cold he'll do his chirp it's very irritating so you know if I've got a bunch of stuff in my head and I've got to stop and I've got to do something where I've got to crank the heat up where I'm uncomfortable so he can be comfortable or whatever, then I gotta do it. You know, I gotta do, I gotta stop and I gotta think about a couple things when I've got a bunch of stuff on my head. And and if you have children or any of that kind of stuff, I I don't even imagine what it, what it, you know, how a child could be irritating and, you know, bug the shit out of you and, and you scream at them or whatever. I got plenty of that as a, as a child. And... I probably will never know if it was if it was me or if it was them. Probably both. So another thing that's been on my mind is speaking of childhood, some of the things from my childhood, you know, my my memory has delighted me with opening up some things from my childhood a couple of months before my 41st birthday. So I'm, and we're talking almost 41 years of living and things from when I was before five, six, seven. 
started coming to my mind. And trauma is a part of what is said to be possible reasons for mood swings. And there's no doubt about it that when these things came into my mind, it was more of a, an epiphany. Where like, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, I remember that now. How did I not remember any of that from when I was a kid? How did all that just turn off completely? And little, little pieces were coming together inside of my head. And then after a couple of weeks, I'm practically crying thinking about some of these things. And I'm, and it hurts. It hurts so much that I, I realize that this is why I have some things in my life with relationships that don't carry through, or usually when you're getting it to a point of companionship, a girlfriend or whatever, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, you go into, there's going to, sadly enough, the other person is going to want you to give. And they're going to want you to open up. And if you don't do that, you're out the door. You know, because that's, there's got to be cracks so that way people can get into your heart. You know, they've got to be in there so that way they can basically do what they will for good or not good or good now and then not good down the line if they need to pull out that artillery and thinking about these things really makes me consider what I am and who I am and that's another thing part up at you know, the grief and everything, and, and realizing that you know, once you've broken a mirror or once you've broken a glass window and that's what your mind is, it's the pieces are there. You're, you're not ever going to be a whole window ever again. And I, I think about other people and I think about the trauma of childhood and all that. And, you know, people that have watched others die or whatever and tra very traumatic things that have left them into basically shock and maybe a whole lot different from it for a child mm. and I you know other people I get to thinking about it and I just realized that it's probably more prevalent than then I, I know, you know, a lot, a lot of people are not going to talk about their childhood and, and how it messes with their lives and whatever. It might not show so much. So it's really, I think it's really is the, the brain that you were born with is more probable to more, more susceptible to the trauma. You know, you are, you are a person that is more sensitive to a traumatic mind. You're just a sensitive person. And then there's other people that could have had the same exact similar things that I've had. And it didn't really affect them as much. So, and if for anyone that's thinking that the, that the mood swings is entirely from childhood trauma, I'm saying, well, think a little more about that. And I, and I think about it a little more, too, that it's probably both. You were born that person. So the same as if anyone had ever had done anything to you or anything like that when you were a child, that you, you, I, I ask myself, well, what kind of person were they born as? And what kind of stuff did they go through as a, a child? Because some of these things kind of are possibly hereditary or whatever. Which leads to forgiveness. 
which it seems like I've forgiven a lot of things in life. And maybe I'm not thinking about all the times that I didn't forgive or turn my backs on people, turn my back on people, turn my, my heart away from people. Or when I've completely shut people out or off right there in front of their faces, just completely gone. You know, it's in, a, in an instant, it's just, fuck you. And there's nothing you'll ever do, ever, to make it any better. And I've, I'm thankful for the channel impaired functioning. The gal on there had a video about gray areas. It's in my playlist. You, you could find it somewhere in there. Just look up the channel Impaired Functioning and there's the video Gray Areas. When I saw her video, it was something I really needed and I keep that in mind. Gray areas, very important for you know, the so-called term black and white thinking because it's much more than just the thinking. <laughs> it's black and white living. It's black and white. It's just, you're out of here. I'm out of here. I'm done. Fuck this, fuck that. Taking, having hundreds of video games and just taking them out one after another, playing it for five minutes. No, fuck this, fuck this. Putting it back, putting another one in there. Oh, oh great, this is wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Five minutes later, fuck this. You know, that's a, that's a, that's, that's a, I'd say a disease, a real issue with the mind. There's, just, there's no traction there. There's no getting on. Mm, plenty of enjoyment here and there. It's just... And I certainly don't want you to get the idea that there's zero traction. Of course there's traction there. I just have these... These things about the things that I love. Or where emotions are attached to whatever and however. And some things... You can, let's say you're doing a painting and you put a little color on your palette and you put a little color upon your canvas and maybe you can go five minutes, maybe you can go 40, 40 minutes of painting. Well, at least you can just put everything down. Maybe, maybe seal up your palette, let your palette, wash your palette off, let your, what you were going to use go down the drain and you come back three days later and go at it well some things are not a painting and some things you, you you're not gonna just put down you know sometimes you've got someone there in your face talking in, at your face about something and there's they're not a fucking painting you know this is a person that's wanting some kind of mm, what's the word they're wanting something. They're wanting something. And they're not going to stop until they get what they want. And you could say that about any one of us. It's just when you're in your skin, and they're in their skin, and this is happening to you, and you're looking at them, and you're wanting them to disappear, and you know it's not going to happen, and you're going to sit there for another 10 minutes listening to whatever the fuck they have to say, It's not going to happen. So I'll interrupt them and tell them, hey, look, sh just shut the fuck up. I don't care. And then, boom, not good. <laughs> not good. Maybe you can relate to that. And that's insensitive. It's invalidating. It's selfish. And it's not caring. Which brings me back to apathy. If I'm not caring... It's, it's very probable that I'll just tell him, look, I don't give a shit, just shut the fuck up. It'll just come out. For example, I was over at my sister's and my niece, who's about eight, was singing. She wasn't singing. She was doing, I need attention. I'm, I'm just going to hum crap. And we were doing something. We were, my sister has a little basketball thing down in her basement. And we were playing a little arcade basketball. And I, I just said, okay, 
Okay, so I'm trying to just shut the fuck up. <laughs> and it just came out. And they both looked at me. I was with my sister. I was with her. And they both looked at me. And then she had the look on her face that she was about to cry. And I had to go over there real quick. Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm just, you know, I, I've got to play it off. I start laughing. And then they kind of start laughing. And then I've got to wiggle my way out of basically just telling her to shut the fuck up. And all she, you know, according to them, all she was doing was just singing. She wasn't singing. She was just making crap noises and I, you know I don't want to hear that stuff that's just an example of just one thing and that's something I gotta remember so next time I go over there I'm gonna be thinking oh, gotta be careful gotta be careful gotta and as I'm being irritated by something I gotta you know the, the dog coming up between my leg getting freaking spit all over my fucking legs and shit while I'm sitting there trying to eat something that I really don't want to eat or whatever <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty miserable, isn't it? <laughs> it sounds miserable. Just just talking about it sounds really miserable. Where where's a good place? Where's a good place to put yourself? Well, it's usually alone. Being alone, I can scream at the stars if I'm out in the middle of nowhere. I can tell the moon to go fuck off all night long. It's a little different with people, of course. So that's probably. I have some other things maybe I'll talk about later. So best to everyone here. I know some of you have been going through some roughness. My heart goes out to you. We all basically, every human does. It's, it, with the with the moody people there are some things that are right there though that we can as if we're all just sitting in the same room looking at the same thing so I don't know when I'll make another video maybe I'll make another video here in a little while mostly I'd, I'd like to think that some of the things that I've said is something that you can use that it's something that you can maybe share with other people in your own way. Take it in. Reword it. Retranslate it. It's something you can share in a video. Something you can share with some friends. Or something of some use. Well, anyways, have a good night. <laughs>